Hi everybody, it's Levi Clay and I'm back again for another vlog and this time we're going to talk about the subject of improvising. Hmm. Now this is a phrase that you've probably seen more and more in the past few years on YouTube, Facebook, the social media scene. Um, often people posting guitar videos of themselves and using the word improvisation. Um, the reason I want to talk about this is because I see the phrase often being misused um, and what I mean by that is I see somebody playing an improvisation but it's very very clear that they're not improvising they've composed what they're playing they're trying to give the impression that it's improvised because in their mind an improvised solo something that's truly improvised is somehow better than something that has been composed which is a silly notion we'll come on to that um, now when you see guys doing this to myself being an improviser myself it's very obvious when when somebody is doing this you can see it in their face, you can see it, they're, they're, nothing looks relaxed, the rhythms, they sound stiff um, because they're trying to recite something. Whereas because I'm a, a real guy that's into improvisation and I just like to you know, play the guitar and see whatever, see what happens, um, there's never that stress when I'm playing um, because I have confidence in my improvising ability. So um, the way I want to talk about this is very much in the style that somebody like Scott Henderson would talk about it. In fact, um, Scott's talked about this on uh, his podcast, Guitar Wank, with Bruce Foreman, worth checking out, great podcast, I've been listening to that for the past uh, month or so, um, really enjoying that. Uh, Scott is very vocal about phrasing, he has a fantastic DVD on phrasing, and in that, many of you may have seen it, Ed has sex with his girlfriend. Um, in that, Scott uses the language. He talks about guitar playing like a language. And I've kind of taken that across into my teaching. So when I'm talking to you today, I am improvising. I don't know what I'm going to say before I say it, but I have something that I want to express. So I'm expressing myself by improvising using the words. It's important to understand that I'm not inventing words. I'm not just creating words out of nowhere. These are words that I've used before. They're phrases that I've used before. But I'm stitching them together fluently in a way that I'm able to express myself. So what does that mean in terms of music? Well, it does mean that as an improviser, it's totally possible for you to improvise a solo playing lots of ideas that you've played before. So classic blues cliches like this. Or, or this or even this one, you could use each of those uh, spontaneously in different keys, you might stitch them together, um, and what you're going to find is that's still improvisation. So the example I always give of this is uh, John Coltrane. If you analyse John Coltrane's solo on um, Giant Steps, you see the same phrases being repeated over and over again. In fact, there's a fantastic analysis of this in um, the Hal Leonard book, Building a Jazz Vocabulary. Uh, I've, I've been enjoying that book recently, so it's topical. Um, in there, it tells you, it shows you uh, two bar fra sorry, two beat phrases that Coltrane plays on that, and it numbers the amount of times that those phrases appear. And we're not talking about these little two beat fragments appearing once or twice. We're talking 20, 30 times over the course of a solo. And Giant Steps is a great one to analyse because there are so many alternate takes of it on the special edition. So you can really see that when John was improvising over such a, a harmonically complex track for the time, he was drawing on vocabulary that he'd practiced, vocabulary that he had studied. He wasn't inventing words. That's really kind of important in the improvisation kind of thing. You can totally improvise and not necessarily be inventing words. So another good guy for improvisation is Carver Hayen. Carver Hayen, fantastic guitar player, super tramp guitar player. Um, fantastic solo guitar player, lovely tone, some of the best tone I've ever heard. He's a great improviser and he has a very unique sound, but when Carl talks about this, um, I forget the exact statistic, it was, it was the idea that was important, but he says on the best night of his life, on the best night of his life when he's out playing a gig, he might be improvising, truly improvising, 5% of the time. And what he means by that is the stuff that he's never played before, the stuff that he wasn't expecting, the stuff that just comes from somewhere. Um, but the rest of the time, he's playing things that he has played before. He might not be planning them. He might not be thinking in advance, oh, yeah, you know that solo that I play on on uh, Route 66? I'm going to do this and then this and then. It, it doesn't work like that. The solo comes and you just sort of see how the moment takes you. 
And another good guy for the improvising thing is Wayne Krantz. Um, New York jazz cat, fantastic, probably one of my favourite guitar players of all time. Very unique sound. Again, he's he's probably more so in the improvisation camp and a real improviser. Very rarely does he repeat his ideas, but he does repeat ideas. You do hear the same phrases from him time and time again. That's impossible to get away from. So, improvisation is a language, the, like uh, the way I'm talking to you now. I'm using the words, I'm not inventing words. So don't think that when you improvise, you have to just create stuff out of nowhere. That will come the better and better you get at your instrument, the more fluent you become. Let's look at the flip side, composing solos. Hmm. Now, is that a bad thing? Is composing your solos a bad thing? I'm going to put my hands up and say, on the Hellcat Molly album, which I urge you to check out, um, there's 10 tracks, 11 on the special CD edition, and I composed probably 9 of them, 10 of them. And the two that weren't composed were pretty composed. I had a sketch of what they were going to do. Um, so they were very strictly composed um, to allow them to build in the way I wanted them to, to flow the way I wanted them to, to be honest, to you know, to say, well, I've not used this technique at all on the album yet. Maybe I could work some alternate picking into this solo, etc. In a rock context, that really works for me, um, though some guys prefer to improvise. I like to think of my rock soloing as uh, more, more vocal, more um, uh, memorable, anthemic. So I want themes in there. I want phrases that, are, that sound very deliberate. So, have I just uh, admitted to some horrible faux pas, put my hands up and say, I've composed solos? No, of course not. Um, that's the way great rock and roll works. You have improvisation, but then sometimes improvisation becomes composition. Sometimes I try and improvise a solo and I do a take and I go, no, I didn't like that, and then I improvise again. And before long, I mean, that's really how the Hellcat solos were composed. It was improvising and then I'd go oh I like that and then I'd have another stab at it and that part that I liked would stay there and I'd build on that and eventually get it to the point where I knew exactly what I was going to do um, so it starts as improvisation and becomes composition the analogy that I want to give you though is um, think of a great political speaker now I don't consider myself much of a political mind but if you think of a great political speaker someone that can stand up on the stage and uh, and talk and captivate people What's important? Is it important that they stand up and they don't know what they're going to say and they just say whatever comes to them and it reaches people? Or is it? would you prefer somebody that stands up and has a script and they know exactly what they're going to say and they reach people? Which of those is better? My argument is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you reach people. All that matters is that you do reach people. You have to connect with people. As long as you've got a message, so in the political thing, that might be, I don't know, an economic plan or uh, a way that you're going to deal with um, budget deficits or, again, I don't want to speak politics on these vlogs, so you get what I'm saying. It's not about how you come to your ideas. It's not about how you present these ideas to people. It's that there are ideas there. It's that you are conveying something. It's that you're moving people. You have to move people. You have to play for the music, not for you. And that's really how I feel the term improvisation is being bastardised. It's, it's being used like a, a badge of honour. You put the word improvisation on your video and you just tick in a box. Oh yeah, cool, he can improvise. And really, it doesn't matter. You need to be proud. If, you, if you've composed a solo, then great. Put your hands up and say, this is a solo that I wrote. What do you guys think? The the deceit that is involved in composing a great solo and then saying to people, look what I improvised, this is an improvisation. I just don't see the need. There's just no need to deceive people like that. So improvisation is a, fan, uh, a fantastic subject and a fascinating uh, thing to, to try and become a master of. Um, what do you guys think about improvisation though? Is it something that you've dabbled in? Do you feel confident as an improviser? Um, or do you prefer to compose your solos? I'd love to know what you think, and I'd love to know if you've seen any of these examples that I'm talking about whereby you've got guys that I'm pretty confident aren't actually improvising. They know what they're playing. They, they, they know what's going in there. Um, yeah, so we could talk about that all day. Drop a comment in the box below, and of course hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you on the next vlog.